Hey guys, and welcome back to Peck Palm, a channel where I talk about match reviews, things that I do to try to get better, and also hopefully some things that will help you get better as well. I hope you guys are doing great and uh, practicing hard out there. Um, today we have a new practice session that I did um, the other day, and it's actually filled with a lot of cool stuff, but it also has a how to hit more spin and speed on both your forehand and backhand loops. Um, it's a topic I wanted to cover a while ago, but didn't really see the opportunity to present it, but now's the time, so uh, I hope you guys uh, get something from that and enjoy that. Alright, so let's just uh, get right into the video and um, see what there is to see. Alright, so our first uh, warm-up that I usually do is uh, looping loop-to-loop. -loop. It's a good, um, well, besides the forehands and backhands, Looping the loop is a, a really nice warm up for you to uh, get the body going, get the timing going. Uh, a lot of different things that are affecting you during that day. So, um, yeah. All right, let's get into our big topic more speed and spin on forehand and backhand loops. And this is the theory of the spin and speed. So, the human body has these like things like levers the wrist, the elbow, the shoulder, uh, the torso, the hips, the legs. There's a, lot, there's a lot of levers in the body. And athletes use these levers uh, to create speed. And so yeah, you can see in this picture here, there's a couple levers that are being used to throw a football or um, some levers that are being used to hit a golf ball. And they all work very similarly. Um, and that is to uh, create speed. You need to, key point, uh, speed is created by firing specific muscle groups hard while keeping others relaxed. This will create lag or bow in multiple levers and will create a whip-like motion. So it's important to fire really hard with the lower body in table tennis and other sports, but keep the upper body like arms forearms and wrists relaxed throughout the swing and this will create a whip-like motion if done correctly. So how do we use the large muscles in the forehand? Well here's me throwing a ball, a weighted ball to uh, show you. And it's kind of like a spring. You know you're using your legs and you're turning. And then this is me demonstrating the relaxation of the upper body. You don't want to use the hands, you just want to let the lower body uh, guide the shot and swing your arms. And here I have a uh, video of me playing with the robot and basically I'm just kind of slowly step by step uh, increasing the speed but the fundamentals are still the same. The legs and core are turning the body and the arm is uh, being trailed behind and it's keeping uh, like a rigidness so that you can have good uh, structure in the swing. Alright, so more spin on the backhand. So it's very similar. You want to have your wrist relax through the swing and you don't want to poke at it like, like this video right here. I'm not uh, relaxing my wrist through the swing. So that's what I'm basically doing in this drill is I'm just trying to wait for the ball and relax my wrist and let, it, let the ball come into this kind of pocket where my wrist is, is still bent and still relaxed. And then as I accelerate through the shot, my, my wrist kind of snaps and that'll create that spin and speed that I'm looking for. But it takes to be a little bit brave and wait for the ball. All right, measuring depth on medium long balls. This is for the back end. So this drill, I, it's, it's basically a server turn drill. So you have to measure the depth. Uh, and you have to figure out whether or not you can use underneath the table or you have to swing over the table. So it's very important to be able to tell the depth of these or else you're probably going to get stuck here and there and not be able to make a good swing. So just have your multiple giver give you medium long or long and try to decide whether it's short or long and it should be very helpful when you're trying to make good loops off the serve return and flips. Alright, this is a semi-random drill called middle corner. And it's a great moving drill because it lets you, uh, you know, 50% of the time where it's going to go. 
But it also is a great drill because it lets you um, focus on your transition from forehand to backhand. And it's important to keep your hand in front of the body uh, when you're playing each shot because you don't know if it's going to go to the forehand or backhand. So after you hit each shot, it's really important that you keep your hand there so that you can choose which direction to go after you see the direction the blocker went. Um, so that, I think that's the most important part of the drill. A lot of people I know, they take their hand and then they kind of swing back and then they get stuck and are hitting backhands like that instead of keeping their hand in front and being able to transition very nicely. Yeah. All right, the next one. Backhand, backhand until opponent goes down the line. And this is starting off with flip. So in this drill, I was really focusing on making a good flip, moving out quickly because it's top spin, and then playing backhand, backhand with my opponent, but really keeping a good eye on whether or not he was uh, the angle change. You can kind of see these little small angle changes and kind of know when your opponent's going to go down the line. So uh, before I used to really not pay attention too much to my opponent's paddle, but now I'm, I'm starting to try to really uh, focus a lot more on what, what they're doing with their racket, how they're touching the ball, because these have a very big um, impact on what you're supposed to do next. And if you miss that, then you're missing half the battle. So yeah, very important to uh, watch your opponent's racket. All right, serving off the side of the table. This is a, a good strategy and it's quite fun to practice. Um, so yeah, you can see Dimitri served off the edge of the table and what happens is the edge of the table kind of limits your opponent from making a strong swing uh, because they're afraid they're gonna rip their hand off on the edge of the table. So it kind of limits them to spinning a little bit more and also kind of stops them from having access to the whole table. Uh, so they kind of are pinned to one spot. So here I am practicing with Chance, uh, the serving off the side of the table, and just practicing the outcomes, uh, the different spins, the different speeds, uh, maybe the different placements that he does, and just kind of getting used to it. Because if I want to do it in a tournament, uh, I'm probably going to have to have practiced it a few times and understand what kind of outcomes to expect from my opponent um, when, they, when they move. So it's, it's always good to, to practice these things. Um, yeah. Two. All right, that's the video for today. I hope you guys uh, got something from that. And uh, let me know in the comments if you, uh, what you got or what you need more questions about or if you had some similar ideas that uh, you, you know, felt like adding to this. <clears throat> so yeah. I'll, uh, I'll try to put up another video soon, and I'll see you guys hopefully next week. All right, see you guys.